In this set of screencasts, we look at balanced trees, including 2-4 trees and red-black trees. And we're going to start with 2-4 trees. For the images, I thought of trees that are balanced on the edge of things. This is a tree on the edge of Kalalau Valley on Kauai. For this screencast, I'm going to try things a little differently. I'm going to use my web notes as a substrate for my comments. We're going to look at 2-4 trees because we want to understand red-black trees, and 2-4 trees are an alternate representation of the same thing. Uh, to lead into 2-4 trees, 2-4 trees are a special kind of multi-way tree. So a multi-way search tree is a, an ordered search tree. It's a generalization of, of the kind of trees you've seen so far, where internal nodes can have two or more children. And they have one less of the number of keys in the nodes than the children that they have. For example, this node here has three children, and it's got two keys in it. So it'll have keys K1, K2, and then children V1, V2, V3, uh, where the number of children is one more than the number of keys. And like a binary search tree, this is a generalization of the binary search tree here, where all the, the keys in this child here have to be uh, less than this key here. All the keys in this child here have to be greater than this key here. And the ones in between here, of course, would be uh, greater than that and less than that. So this generalizes the nodes by putting more data in a node. Uh, one difference between these and a binary search tree is that the leaves have no data. They're just going to be placeholders. Um, essentially, you can think of them as just nil markers, but we um, reason about them in some of our algorithms. OK, so how do we traverse one of these trees? Well, we can see it as an, uh, a generalization of the binary search tree traversal. Uh, the in-order traversal is in, in a binary search tree is you um, visit the left children first, then visit the parent, then visit the right children. And it's the same thing here, except we have multiple, uh, essentially multiple parents, parents, so we do it in the order. Uh, so go, you know, visit the left children first, uh, go left there, so you'd visit this first, and then visit the parent, the key that belongs, you know, between those two children. You go down and visit that child, this parent key, this child, this parent key, this child, and then when you're done with that node, you go back up here and you would finally visit that. As you can see the numbering here, you know, that's the eighth one visited, and so on. So that's a generalization of the um, in-order traversal to these multi-way trees. And, and we can generalize searching in a similar manner. Uh, for example, um, suppose if we're searching for the key 30, we dive in here and we say, um, we start comparing the keys within the node, it's bigger than that, it's bigger than that. So this is a linear comparison. So if it's bigger than this last one, you go down to this node. It's bigger than that, but it's smaller than that. So you can dive down between them, and there it is. Um, if you were looking for 26, of course, you'd say it's bigger than 24. It's smaller than 27. And then you go here, and you know that it's not there because you've just hit a null leaf node. So we general, generalize this to say at each internal node with d children and d minus 1 keys. If the key you're looking for is one of the keys in the node, you have success. Otherwise, this just generalizes the binary search tree strategy of going uh, left if you're smaller than the key and right if you're greater than the key, but then we have to do all the in-between ones as well. So this brings us to the variously named 2-4 or 2-3-4 trees. These are multi-way nodes that are restricted in two ways. One is that they have a node size property that they every internal node has at least two children and at most four children. So the multi-way trees, it, they could have more children, but we're going to restrict this to going from one key, two keys, or three keys. And the depth property is the other one that all the external nodes, these things down here, must have the same depth. That is, the tree is balanced. And this is what makes it it's useful because we're going to know 
that with a balanced tree, we're packing up as packing in as much as we can in this vertical height of the tree. And of course, we're going to be looking for logarithmic uh, behavior in any process that traverses the tree from the root down to what you're looking for. So we're going to call these two nodes, three nodes, or four nodes, depending on um, how many children they have. If it has one key, it's a two node. If it has two keys, it's a three node. And three keys, four node. OK, since um, most algorithms that operate on trees have to work from the root downwards, as we know, the height of the tree is really important because many of these algorithms, their runtime is going to depend on the height of the tree. So as usual, we want to know something about the height of the tree. Um, this is actually going to be a, a worst case analysis. It can actually be better than this. But it turns out that the uh, asymptotic analysis will be the will be the same in the other cases as well. Uh, so let's say uh, we have a 2-4 tree of height h. Okay, so we're going to ask if we have a fixed n, what's the tallest possible tree we can have? In other words, the worst case. And that is when all the internal nodes are two nodes because you have to get more height to get in all the keys. Um, so remember, you know, a, a, a two node has just one key in it and so on. You know, each, each of these has one key in it. So for a given number of keys, you're going to get the tallest tree if you only put one key in there. Um, now, due to the depth property, uh, that's the property that requires that all the, essentially that the tree is complete, that all of the uh, leaf nodes are at the same level. So we can treat this as a complete binary tree. And uh, we could just use the actually the uh, quantitative fact I gave you back on the first uh, tree screencast. Uh, but here I'm actually going to show that fact rather than just use it. So at depth 0, we have to the 0, which is equal to 1 item. At depth 1, we have 2 to the 1, which is equal to 2 items. And uh, that would continue on. At depth uh, 2, we would have 2 to the 2 or 4 items. Or more generally, at depth um, h minus 1, 2 to the h minus 1 items, and then at depth h, um, well, there's 2 to the h nodes, but um, none of them store keys, so we're going to count this as 0 items stored. So now we want to ask, for a given n, uh, how does n relate to the depth of the tree, how do, or how does n relate to the height of the tree? And so this expression says we can pack into the tree no less than 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus dot 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 2 to the h minus 1 items, which we've just shown here. We this uh, less than or equal to is used here because we could pack in more, you know, if we had elected to make some of these, you know, uh, you know, three nodes or four nodes where there's more children there, you know, like that. Uh, but this will give us a worst case bound because, you know, the, the highest h we're going to get for a given n. So let's look at what this expression is here. Okay, I've scrolled down here, and here's our expression, which remember we got from 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the h minus 1 is how many items are in the, uh, in the tree. Uh, so we want to simplify this expression. Well, this is a geometric series where if you take um, x to be uh, 2, because that's the, the base of the, that's receiving the exponent, and the exponent runs from 0 up to h minus 1. So in this formula, uh, what's n in this formula is going to be h minus 1. Uh, so this n will be h minus 1. And wherever you see an x in this formula, it will be a 2. So <clears throat> substituting, you know, here's that expression again. That means it's going to be sum from 0 to h minus 1, 2 to the k, and then we write this formula out to get the solution. 2 to the h minus 1 plus 1 in the exponent is simply 2 to the h um, minus 1, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's divided by 1, so that goes away too. So we just get this. So we simplified um, this part of the expression, which is the right-hand side of our equation, to this. So here's the equation rewritten. But we want to isolate the uh, 
term with the h in it because we're interested in what the height is as a function of n, not what n is as a function of the height. So just add one to both sides and we get this. m plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2h, but if you just take the log of both sides, you know, log of that and log of this, which I've done down here, um, well the log base 2 of 2 to the h is h, so this gives us our bound that h is less than or equal to the log of n plus 1. And of course this is going to wash out in the big O analysis. Um, so h is, is theta of log n. Uh, so that's the proof that it's never going to get any worse than that. And it can be better if you pack in more nodes, more keys into the nodes. Okay, so we've already established that searching in a 2-4 tree within items requires time proportional to the path from the root to the leaves and you're searching down uh, some path just like you do in a binary tree. Um, so searching is log in time. Okay, that concludes our introduction to what 2-4 trees are and uh, next screencast we're going to dive into some of the details here on how we do insertion and deletion in them.